So following on from our previous video, we're going to look at having uh, SSH server running on, or open SSH server as it is, uh, running on our Windows 10 desktop. Now, there isn't really a lot of call for having a Windows 10 desktop that you can SSH into, but we're going to do it anyway. So we're basically running the script that we have up on GitHub at this point to go ahead and do the install for us uh, with all the steps that we included in a previous video so that we don't need to manually type them out and wait. On the other hand, my virtual machine is not the fastest in this case for my Windows 10 image, so this might take a little while. In the meantime, we can kind of cover some of the background. So as an example, I can show you the script that is currently up there on GitHub. Um, which allows us to kind of go through the install steps. So we have a, a section up here which checks if the components are installed and if not installs them. It starts the services, uh, it goes ahead and checks the firewall um, and if all is good then it goes ahead and it then copies across the keys. Now obviously you can do exactly the same for your own environment but I would suggest that you change the public keys first of all and that you preferably take them from a location that's relevant for you. Now, with that said, we should be coming up roughly toward the, the end of the installation because it doesn't take all that long. So, now that our installation is finished, we can see that we have two components installed, a new registry key, basically all the steps that we expected to get output for because those are the things that happened. So if I do a quick Windows uh, capability uh, online and then just pipe uh, the output and filter to see if our open SSH elements are there, uh, pretty much the same as we, we did at the beginning on the previous video and what we should see is that both elements are there and installed if we don't see that then obviously something went wrong and in this case I need to add the star. there we go so we've got the wildcard so we can see both components are there so what I can do now is I can hop over to uh, my Linux machine again and I can just uh, go ahead and open SSH into my Windows 10 and do this obviously as an account that has uh, this key copied to it. So in this case, uh, my admin account or tips for IT pros has already got the SSH key added. So I can connect in as that user. All good. Now, what if I were to connect as a different user? So in this case, I also have a test user set up on my Windows 10. So if I try to install uh, connect as test user, you can see I get a permissions denied. Um, main reason for this is because there's no ID set up on that test user. He's not a member of the administrators group, which means he cannot use our previously used key, aka the authorization key for the administrators group. So what we would do is we go in as that user. Now all the SSH is already running, so all we need to do at this point is create two things. One is the folder structure, and the second is the key itself. So we can open just a regular uh, PowerShell as this user and uh, quickly reset the window so we can see what we're doing. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new directory uh, for the SSH key to sit in. That's pretty simple. It's .ssh folder. As you can see, if we do a list, there's our new folder. And next, we're going to put under that folder our uh, SSH uh, public key. So I'm going to basically do the same as I did before, which is download the public key. Now, you may encounter this error from time to time. It depends on whether or not you've connected with a browser, uh, aka opened the browser and connected or not. If not, you can use basic parsing. Um, but usually, once you've opened the browser at least once, this is not something that you need to worry about. And we're just going to confirm that this is again the key that we're copying in. So we can now see our authorized key file exists, our content of the key exists. So we can go back to our Linux terminal once more and we should be able to check if we can log in as this user. Um, you can also see we, we check the content there that the key does match. So over we go, open SSH as test user and bingo we're straight in no problem. I'm just going to do who am I, it helps if I type it correctly, who am I, and you can see all done. So hopefully you found this useful, if you did you know what to do, and if you didn't, well I guess you also know what to do.